What is the difference between a throttle and a collective? And why do I need both bound to my controls? Let's dive into it and find out the difference between these two controls. This video is brought to you thanks to the generosity of our patrons. If you'd like to support Hellysimmer.com and all that we do, please visit patreon.com forward slash Hellysimmer. Hi there everyone, I am Sergio, editor and founder of Hellysimmer.com, the premier helicopter flight simulation website. Welcome to another episode of Ask Me Stuff. In this episode, we're going to cover one of the questions that pops up a lot when you're starting with helicopters. What is the difference between the throttle and the collective? And why do I need them bound on my joystick? Before we go on, I just want to make a small disclaimer. A lot of the things that I'm going to say next are going to be very simplistic. I will just keep it short and simple so that the point comes across. So let's start with the throttle. If you are coming from the fixed wing aircraft, and chances are that is your background, you are probably used to use the throttle to control the aircraft speed or to actually ascend or descend depending on how you use it. So you throttle up to increase speed or gain altitude and you throttle down to decrease speed or to decrease altitude. When you start flying helicopters on a sim, that mentality usually goes with you. So you kind of think the same way. So your first thought is, okay, I need to assign an axis to my throttle so the helicopter goes up and down. But that's not quite how it works. There are, of course, several types of helicopters with one or multiple rotors, with one or multiple engines. To keep things simple, we are going to use a one engine, one rotor helicopter, but everything I'm going to say applies to all of those helicopters as well. Let's start with the throttle. When you throttle up, the engine runs faster, and when you throttle down, the engine obviously runs slower. The engine is what makes the rotor actually rotate or move. If you throttle up, the engine and the rotor will both run faster. If you throttle down, the engine and the rotor will both run slower. Picking up the knowledge you already have from the fixed wing aircraft, what usually happens is that you throttle up your propeller or your engine runs faster and the aircraft goes faster. It's not quite the same with helicopters. You see, with helicopters, the engine tends to run at approximately the same speed and so does the rotor. What does make the helicopter climb or descend is not so much the engine speed, but the pitch at which the rotor blades are. But the pitch of the rotor blades are not controlled by the throttle. The throttle only controls the speed of the engine, which in turn controls the speed of the rotor. What does control the pitch of the blades is the collective. When you increase the pitch of the blades, you are providing the rotor system with more lift and the helicopter goes up. If you decrease the pitch of the blades, you will have less lift on the rotor system and the helicopter will tend to descend. Sounds pretty simple, right? With the throttle, you control the speed at which the rotor rotates and with the collective, you control the pitch of the blades. Since helicopters fly with the same rotation speed of the rotor, it means that you can just throttle up 100% and leave it there. That's how it would go in a perfect world. In a not so perfect world, here's what happens. When we increase the pitch of the blades, you are also increasing the drag on the blades, which is making the rotor decrease its speed. So you'll need more power from the engine to counteract that loss of speed, which means you need to throttle up. If you decrease the pitch of the blades, the opposite happens. You have less drag on the rotor, the rotor will tend to accelerate, so you need to reduce throttle on the engine. Sounds complicated? Well, it can be. If you don't have something to help you control the throttle, you'll have to do it manually. That's why it's important to have a throttle which you can control via an axis. But wait, well, on most helicopters, I just throttle up to 100% and I don't need to do anything else. That happens because most helicopters, at least most modern helicopters, have something that helps you do that, which is called the governor. The governor is an automated system which keeps the engine running at a certain threshold. 
So for example, if you want the engine to be running at 100% its RPM or revolutions per minute, you just throttle it up. Even if you pull the collective up, increasing the pitch of the rotor blades, adding more drag to the system and needing more power from the engine, the governor will do that for you. It will increase the throttle automatically. It's not like you're going to feel the throttle handle move. That won't happen. But what is going to happen is that all the commands that you put in the throttle will go through the governor, which will know what to do. That way, when you pull the collective up, the governor will throttle up for you. When you push the collective down, the governor will throttle down for you. Pretty cool. So why is it that you need these two axes assigned to your joystick? Well, you don't. If you want to sim in a more immersive or realistic way though, you should if you have the extra axis to assign to the throttle. That way, you can do startups and shutdowns by following the checklist and you can even practice auto rotations by throttling down. So how do you assign these axes to your joystick or any other controller? Well, most of the modern flight simulators out there have these two axes already separated. So you can assign the collective to an axis and you can assign the throttle to another axis. But there may be some exceptions. Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 or FSX and Lockheed Martin's Prepared or P3D have different assignments. For you to be able to assign an axis to the collective on an FSX and P3D, you need to actually assign it to the throttle. If you want to assign an axis to the throttle in FSX and P3D though, you need to assign it to the pitch control. Which is kind of weird since in real world, the collective is what controls the pitch and the throttle controls the throttle. In FSX and P3D is kind of the opposite. And if you want to control the collective, you need to assign it to the throttle. And if you want to control the throttle, you need to assign it to the propeller pitch. Another side note, on scenes such as x for example, some developers assign the collective or the throttle to other, other axes for some reason. It's not unusual to see the throttle, for example, assigned to the wing sweep axis. That's because x has some issues with the governor and this is the way these developers have found to go around those issues. So again, in a nutshell, you control the speed of the engine and the rotor through the throttle and you control the pitch of the rotor blades, which is actually what increases or decreases lift on the rotor system through the collective. If you are using a HOTAS, an hands-on throttle and stick system, I would recommend you assign the collective to your throttle axis and probably invert it. That way you'll need to pull it to increase collective and you need to push it to decrease collective. If you have any other axis, like for example, a thumb knob or something which you can find on some Logitech or former SciTech joysticks, you can assign that to the throttle, for example. I hope this video helped you understand the differences between the throttle and the collective, how to set it up. And if you have any more questions about this subject, please just let me know by adding your comment below. If you have any questions for any future Ask Me Stuff videos, just add them on the comments below as well or email me at sergio at helisimmer.com. You will find the address on the description down below. I hope you find this video helpful and that you like it. If you do, please do give it a like. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel as well. I will be eagerly expecting your questions for future episodes and I will see you all on the next video. Until then, take care and fly safe.